In this video, I'm going to give you another technique to make beautiful fondant ruffles on your cakes. Hi, it's Carolyn. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm a professional cake decorator just outside of Philly. I've been decorating cakes since 2002. And on this channel, I share my tips and tricks and ways that I bake and decorate cakes to help you along your journey. So if you'd like to join me, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you can get notified whenever I release a new video. So the other day I posted a video on how I do a petal ruffle effect. I can link that below. And I was doing more ruffles in a different technique on a cake this week and I wanted to show you how I do that. And before we get into the video, I just want to let you know I designed my first free guide for you guys. It's a birthday cake design blueprint and it'll help you come up with ideas for your birthday cakes and I will link that in the description below as well. So let's get into the video. All right, so to start, always have clean hands, obviously. I mean, maybe not obviously, but hopefully people know to wash their hands. <laughs> I have marshmallow fondant here. I can put a card above or a link below, whatever I'll do my video on how I make marshmallow fondant. And what I did, I just popped it in the microwave for about 10 seconds. So it, the marshmallows could soften and it's pliable. It's sticking to my fingers. <laughs> it's pliable and easier to work with. You're gonna want some cornstarch to sprinkle on the counter, as well as some shortening so it doesn't stick to your hands. A rolling pin, a little flour foam. I got this, this is Wilton brand. I actually need a new one, it's wearing thin. But I, I'll link this below as well. And a ball tool, I like to use a metal ball tool. You can use a plastic one. Someone asked me in my last video if you could use plastic, you can. I just find that metal glides a little nicer and plastic sometimes sticks to the fondant. So I just prefer a metal ball tool. And we'll also need a pizza cutter or a ribbon cutter. I'm just gonna use a pizza cutter for this one. Now, so I'm going to do on this cake, I'm going to do, she said she loves light pink, light blue, and light purple. And I actually purchased these cute little sprinkles. I'll call them sprinkles. I'd like to call them jimmies because I'm from Philly, but these are sprinkles. And I'm gonna to try to get the colors to match these uh, when I dye the fondant. So I'm gonna keep that handy. These are adorable. I got these on Amazon. I can link these as well. So start by, I, I like to get some Crisco on my hands so the fondant doesn't stick. It's warm and pliable. And I'm just gonna to start to knead this together. And if you watch my videos, you know I do this. I always add a little bit of Tylos powder to my fondant. The Tylos powder is gonna help the fondant set hard or harder, and it's gonna make it not so soft and stretchy and not hold its shape, right? So if you add a little bit of Tylos powder to this, it's going to hold its shape much better. A little bit goes a long way. So for some fondant, like this much fondant, just a little sprinkle of it on here. Knead this together and then let it sit for about, I don't know, five to 10 minutes and let the Tylos just start, I would say just five minutes and let the Tylos start to work its magic, like I always say, into the fondant and it'll be a lot easier to handle. So just setting this aside for five minutes and then we'll continue. It's been sitting, yes, this is good consistency. It's, it's easy to work with and it's not falling apart. It's holding its shape now. So I wanna roll this out. You wanna roll it pretty thin. I, wanna, I want to cut about six strips out of this. So you're gonna to have to make sure it's wide enough and then long enough. I'll show you what I mean. It's just easier for me to do it and then explain why. <laughs> Sprinkling some cornstarch down so it doesn't stick. Place this down, put a little cornstarch on top so the non-stick rolling pin doesn't stick to it. So I'm gonna roll it wide first, and that is wide enough to cut six strips. And now I'm gonna keep lifting this up and sprinkling cornstarch to make sure that it doesn't stick to the countertop. And just roll this out, making sure that it's pretty thin. I have a big bubble here. I'm just popping those bubbles as they pop up. I am on the lookout for a, another rolling pin. If you can tell me what rolling pin that you have that you like, I'd love to know because these ends here separate and it really gets on my nerves, but I love how this is non-stick. So let me know what rolling pins that you'd like. Let's cut the ends off. 
and I'm gonna cut the strips. So luckily with this, with this pattern or these ruffles, it doesn't have to be perfect strips. If you wanted perfect strips, you can use a ribbon cutter that cuts the even equal width the whole way. But I'm just gonna do about, I don't know, looks like about an inch, inch wide strips. They may not be perfect, that is okay. So I'm gonna do at least six of these. Now I wanna thin the edges. So I'm gonna take my flower former. If you know of one that's much longer than this, please let me know because I use this and it's kind of a pain in the butt as you keep having to shift it. But I'm gonna put the ribbon on here. I have my ball tool and I'm going to have the ball half on the, on the foam, half on the fondant and I'm just pressing down and thinning out that edge. So I have to keep pulling it down, you know? It'd be awesome if there was a really long piece that you could just keep going. Set this one aside, and I'm gonna do the same thing for all six pieces, just thinning out one side. If you find that the ball starts to stick to the fondant, I like to just have a little bit of cornstarch and wipe it on it and then you can keep on going. And you could find what works best for you just going in one fell swoop here or just moving it back and forth. Either way, just as long as you're thinning out the edge. And I should have mentioned, I'm doing this on a nine inch round cake. Um, if you're doing it on a smaller cake, you may not need six strips. Okay, now that's done and let's put it on the cake. All right, I hope my camera doesn't go in and out and start focusing on my hands. It was making it uh, fuzzy in the last video, so I apologize. Um, so, I have my cake here. Just out of the refrigerator, the icing is solid. I'm gonna mark the front with a marker, just so I know where the front is. And the way I find the front of my cake is just what looks most symmetrical going back. Because as you turn it around, you can see like one side's a little lumpier and one side doesn't look perfect. So just turn it around until you find the most perfect looking part. And I didn't mention that I have a turntable here with a piece of non-skid pad. The non-skid pad is going to help prevent the cake, well, not the turntable, but it'll help prevent the cake from sliding around as you're pushing onto it. I have a little bit of water here, some piping gel, and a paintbrush. So I like to take a little bit of piping gel and mix it in the water just to really thin it out. And I'm going to mark, this is the front of the cake. So this is the back and I'm just going to take my paintbrush and just mark some lines up here just so I know that this is the back of the cake. This is where I want to start the ribbons. Now, this is just out of the refrigerator. So the icing is solid. As we put this top row on, it's not going to mess up the icing. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this watered down piping gel and paint around the whole top. All right, let's try filming from this side and see if this works. Because I don't want my arms to be in the way, but I wanna be able to show you what I'm doing. So I'm grabbing one of the ribbons. I like to just take scissors and cut off the end. Now, when I start it, I'm going to tuck the end in. So it's just not a straight finished, uh, it's, it's just not straight on the end. It, it'll look nicer, just trust me. <laughs> I'm gonna push this, I'm gonna make it stick up over the top of the cake a little bit and push this down. Now, I could just put the ruffles around like this and I've done that before, I have a tutorial, I can link that below. But I wanna make these look a little more different. So what I'm gonna do is I'm taking this finger and I'm pushing the ruffles up a little bit. So I'm gonna hold the bottom part with this finger, push them in, squeeze with my thumb, and then press down. So I'm kind of pushing it in and press down. So I'm kind of bunching it before I press it down. It'll give it a different look. It'll look really nice. And just do that the whole way around. So I'm holding the bottom part to keep it secure and then pushing it in, like using my fingers to bunch it and push it into the cake. You need a little bit more of that piping gel back here. There we go. So see, I'm squeezing it here and then just pressing it down, right? Squeeze and press, squeeze a bunch and press. 
and I'm not pressing too hard because I don't want to distort this top uh, part of the cake. And then when I get to the end, I'm going to fold this in and then press it down. That way it's just, it just doesn't look like it stops. It's going to look like a continuous piece. Why was continuous so hard for me to say? <laughs> All right, get the next one. I want to make sure that this is wet enough. Same thing. I'm just going to cut the end off and turn it in and then start here. So now you can see, cause the ends are turned in, it looks like it just continues on. So pinch and push, pinch and push. So I'm using this hand to push it, to guide it in and my right hand to push it down. And then at the end, tuck it in and push it down. And same thing, turning it in to start Turn the other side in to finish, right? All right, so there we have our top row. Now what I'm gonna do is take my hand or take my thumb, my hands are clean, remember that, and I'm pressing the bottom part into the cake. I'm not pressing at the top, because if I press at the top, it's going to distort this nice sharp edge here. So I'm just pressing, where's, my, where's the back of my cake? I'm just pressing in at the bottom just to make sure that it's into the to the buttercream. Did I mention I can link my video on how I ice buttercream cakes? I will do that as well. All right, now I'm gonna do two rows of white and then I'm going to do, I think, three pink, three blue, three purple, and that should cover the whole thing. Now, to do the next layer, I'm gonna paint some of the buttercream and some of the fondant. I don't want to paint too high up in the fondant because you're, you'll be able to see the piping gel. So this part at the bottom is going to be covered by the next row of ruffles. And then repeat the process. Now I'm going to start and I'm going to overlap. So I'm going to put the bottom part of this on the buttercream and then the ruffles are going to stick up over the fondant. So you want to make sure that they're overlapping. It's just a little bit underneath the first row that we did and then pinch it, pinch it together, and push it in. Pinch it and push. Pinch and push. That's the technique. <laughs> and this is a little long right here when it comes to the end, so I'm just gonna cut a little bit off at the end, tuck it in, and finish it. And then same thing, take my fingers and really press that bottom part into the buttercream. All right, and there are our first two rows. So it's pretty warm here today. I don't have the air on yet, but it's like 80. So I, what I wanna do, I'm gonna put this back in the refrigerator while I make the next color fondant, and then I'll take it back out just so it doesn't, um, it's not gonna sweat, it's just I don't want the icing to get too soft. All right, now I'm gonna do the same thing with the pink. I have some pink fondant already dyed, and I have these sprinkles here. And this pink looks pretty similar to this. I want a little bit of more, a little bit of more. That doesn't even make sense. I want a little bit more. <laughs> so I have a little white fondant that I'm going to knead in all together with the pink. Sometimes I talk and just words are hard. <laughs> if you are just dyeing your fondant and not using other fondant that was already colored, I would use this soft pink. A little bit of pink goes a long way. You only need a really, really little bit to get it to be this light pink. And it matches these perfectly. Now this fondant, that pink fondant, already had some Tylos mixed in with it, so I don't have to add any to it. And I'm gonna do the same thing, roll it out. I did put another white strip around the top, so I'm gonna do three of each. Three white, three pink, three blue, three purple. And if there's any extra at the bottom, I could just, I don't know what I'll do. Maybe I'll do a darker purple since there's a darker purple in here. So making sure that you roll it out really thin is important because ruffles look weird if they're not thin. They, I mean, I don't know. I've done thicker ruffles before. I think it was on my little pony cake. 
Um, and they looked okay. So I guess, I guess it's just whatever you're looking to do. But just make sure you roll out enough so you have enough strips. I actually needed to do all three rows. I think I needed nine strips. So I want to make sure that I can cut nine out. I don't know why this pizza cutter sucks today, so I'm gonna use this one. And I'm gonna try to cut nine strips this time. And just repeat the process, thinning the edges of all of them. And I have my water mixed with a little bit of piping gel, starting at the back where I made all those lines and just painting on the buttercream and a little bit on the fondant. And do the same exact thing, tucking in the ends, overlapping it, and then pressing the bottom in pinch and push. So sometimes I pinch and I turn it to the right and push down. And sometimes I pinch and I turn it to the left and push down. This way it gives a little bit more of a variation in the pattern. And you just want to look at it and make sure that it's overlapping. This is really thin here. I'm going to cut this off and just make sure it's overlapping the ruffles above it. and repeat the process. You color the fondant, you roll it out, you cut the strips, thin the edges, and then put the ruffles on the cake. It's the same process the whole way down. All right, and as you get to the bottom, same thing. You just want to wet the fondant. Now, when you get to the bottom, you wanna make sure that your ribbon isn't too tall. So as I put this in, the ribbon comes just underneath the other one, which is perfect. So do the same thing, just putting it in and down at the bottom, scrunching it. So it's more difficult, you see, as you're on the board, I'm kind of just pinching it together and then pushing it in at the bottom, right? All right, and now I'm just gonna take something like the end of a paintbrush and really press this all in. And there's your pretty ruffles on your cake. So adorable. I'm gonna stick this back in the refrigerator until I'm ready to stack and decorate it. So here you go. Here is the awesome little ruffle effect on your cake. I love these. They look so pretty. Gonna put this down. There are so many different ways that you can get ruffles on your cakes. I think I do have a ruffle playlist and I can link that below. Um, I like playing around with ruffles. They make it, everything look so, I don't want to say girly because even boys can have ruffles if they want, but it just ma it makes it look so pretty and they are easy-ish to do. You know, they, they take a little bit of time, but they are so pretty. Now, obviously that cake is not finished. It is the bottom tier of a cake. I will post the picture of the finished product over here and maybe in the thumbnail too. And I want to just say, you guys have been so amazing. And I know I've said this before, but I just love interacting with you guys from all over the world and sharing our knowledge and coming up with new ideas together. You guys, you guys are learning a lot from me, but I'm also learning a lot from you. And I just really appreciate all of you guys. Um, yeah, and I'm just having so much fun making these videos. So thank you for the support. So I think that is it. If you have any questions, leave them below. You know, I will get back to you. And, uh, what do I say next? <laughs> ah, social media. You can follow me on social media. I'm going to try to point exactly to the right spot. I am on Instagram, Facebook, and I have my website. <laughs> Did I get it right? And I will link everything below as well. And please watch these videos next and hit the subscribe button and the bell if you haven't already. Please like this video if you liked it. Share it with everyone because it's so amazing. Thank you so, <laughs> thank you so much for watching the video. I'm a little dramatic. And I will see you on the next one. Bye.